Hello and welcome to Unsolved Sports Conspiracies, a show where we examine sports' greatest myths and debate their validity. This week, we explore the infamous Game 6 of the 2002 Western Conference Finals between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Sacramento Kings. I'm already pissed off. This is the biggest fix in sports history. The Kings were boned. It is Kings proven. Oh my gosh, this classic faker oh, right here. No. Thank, Thank you. you. This is something that brought an in-state rivalry, rivalry, and uh, resulted in one of the biggest controversies in NBA history. The classic David oh, versus Goliath, but this time Goliath cheated. Nah, this time Goliath was just better. No, my, oh, wow. Let's do this. Lakers fan, Kings fan, loser, let's go. Oh. On May 31st at 3.30 p.m., the Los Angeles Lakers and the Sacramento Kings began Game 6 of the 2002 Western Conference Finals at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. I've been through like two breakups in my life, and the first thing I did was watch this series to get myself to even a darker place. That might be the most pathetic thing I've ever heard in my life. The Kings, who held the best regular season record, were leading the series three to two, needing only one more win to clinch a visit to the NBA Finals. But the Lakers, led by their dynamic duo of Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, would prevail. Oh wait, you're forgetting the other three on their team. Uh, the referee crew. Later winning game seven in Sacramento and eventually the championship, completing the Lakers three-peat. So let's just give a little context mm -hmm. to the team in the East. It was the New Jersey Nets who were sorry. The Western Conference Finals then yeah. was essentially it the was, finals. It was the two best teams in the NBA. It's just the way how it works. If you have the best team in the West, best team in the East. This year, the two best teams were in the West. However, some feel that game six wasn't won solely on merit, but instead was the center of a conspiracy. The idea that there was a conspiracy behind the Lakers King series is not just a manifestation in the minds of sad Kings fans. Some consider it one of the worst officiated games in NBA history. So much so that it led to claims that the game was fixed by the NBA as a means to improve their television ratings and increase ticket sales. With the right outcome, the Lakers, who were a media darling at the time, could be sent into their third straight finals for a possible three-peat. I'll say this, okay. it ain't no secret that the NBA has better ratings when the three-peat seeking Lakers are in the finals. A Kings Nets finals? That's ultimately, that means bad ratings. LA is the second biggest market in America. That means when the Lakers are good, it's good for the NBA. When the Yankees are good, it's good for the MLB. When the Dallas Cowboys are good, it's good for the NFL. When the big markets and the big fan bases are good, it brings a lot more eyes to television. I, mean, I agree with you that no one wants to watch the Kings on TV. Now normally at this point, having established the story, I will then present the conspiracy theory. But being a lifelong Lakers fan, a diehard Lakers fan, I do have a conflict of interest here. And now I will pass the reins over to Zach, a lifelong, sad, admirably perseverant Kings fan to take the reins and then uh, present the conspiracy and the argument for the Kings. One large part of the no, game. You don't, no, you don't have to read it like me. Hey, this is my part now. Okay, you read Bucko. it. How, okay. You're in that seat. Read you it. interject. I'm reading it the way I want to read it. Okay, read it however you want to read it. One large part of the game. <laughs> One large part of the game that is pointed to and criticized is the free throw disparity between the two teams in the fourth quarter. The Lakers were averaging 22 free throws in each of the games in the series leading up to game six. However, the Lakers shot 27 free throws in the fourth quarter alone in game six. They shot a total of 40 free throws in the entire game compared to the 25 free throws for the Kings. The extra 18 or so free throws for the Lakers seemed odd to viewers. Here are just a few of the questionable calls. This video has 757,000 views. I might be at least 60,000 of them. That says a lot. That's a foul. Is this a foul? They don't call that. That's not a Dude, foul. Look at that. That's, okay. Hey man, sometimes re games can be refereed poorly. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And sometimes a team shoots 27 free throws in the fourth quarter. That's an offensive That's foul. That's a flop. That is an offensive look at foul. This. Oh, ball! They call that a foul. The body. He got him on the body. Get out of here. He got him on the body. You get out of here. Oh, that's easy to make when it's in slow motion. But when you it's literally just court. said sometimes in a playoff game you don't call fouls. And all of a sudden, there's a little tiny tap to your precious little baby Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Please, Mr. Referee! Don't touch Mr. Kobe Bean! <laughs> don't touch Mr. Kobe Bean! Ready for this? 
Okay, that one wasn't a foul. Okay, so that's the one that you want to admit. That I'll wasn't a foul. I'll concede they that called one. that. A, they called that an and one. Okay. Both Scott Pollard and Vladdy Divac, centers for the Kings, fouled out in the fourth quarter. Pollard with just 11 minutes of playtime. Think about who the Lakers have. They have Shaq. Right. Shaq is a foul drawing machine. That's fair. He goes into the paint, he gets fouled every single time. So Scott Pollard is literally standing there with his hands up like this. Oh yeah, how can we all forget defensive stalwart Scott Pollard? You know what, I shout out to Scott Pollard. I met Scott Pollard when I was six years old. Shout out to Scott Pollard, he served me last week at Applebee's. It was a really good meal. Mike Bibby of the Kings suffered a rough blow to the face by the elbow of Kobe Bryant of the Lakers with just 11.8 seconds left in the game. The hit sent Bibby to the floor with a bloody nose. Even the commentators mentioned that it could have been an offensive foul against the Lakers. Here's the play. <laughs> Look at him, he knows! Well, I wanna see the close up, let's go to the close up. Well, technically, it actually is crowding the space. <laughs> Kobe Bryant takes his left hand here, right arm goes bang. He doesn't take right his left arm here. Here's the thing, that's a swim through move. It's a classic fundamental post move. That's if I just did that to Ryan Bergara right here, I'd be carried off by security. There was some initial outrage following game six. Michael Wilbon of the Washington Post commented, the Kings and Lakers didn't decide the series, three referees did, and claimed the game was a ripoff. He said his voicemail following game six was filled with angry phone calls about the game. While seemingly denying any possibility of a conspiracy, Wilbon claims that the dramatic shift in foul calling certainly gave the public grounds for suspicion of an agenda. The League of Fans and bizarrely politician Ralph Nader were so outraged that they wrote a letter to David Stern, stating, It is important, during the public's relaxation time, for there to be maintained a sense of impartiality and professionalism in commercial sports performances. They demanded the game and officiating be reviewed, as the final score was so close that the game would have been won by the Kings had it not been for the poor officiating. The coach of the Kings at the time, Rick Adelman, even made this comment the night of the game. Our big guys get 20 fouls tonight and Shaq gets four. You tell me how the game went. It's just how it is. They obviously got the game called the way they wanted to get it called. Yeah, I'll tell you how the game went, Rick. It's Shaq. Dude, I will say Shaq is one of the most dominant players in the NBA of all time. And at that he time- He was the best player on that team. Did we foul him in the fourth quarter? Yes, but 27 free throws, dude? That set a record for a quarter in a playoff game that was a game deciding elimination game for the Kings. They all of a sudden decide to all of a sudden start calling ticky tack fouls. Give me a break. 13 calls. Although game six occurred in 2002, it wasn't until 2008 when the game really gained notoriety. On June 10, 2008, over six years after the game, former NBA referee Tim Donahue filed a four-page letter with U.S. District Judge Carol Bagley Amon through his attorney John Laro. In this letter, Donahue makes potentially damning accusations against the NBA and their ethics. Part of the letter addressed the 2002 Lakers-Kings matchup in the officiating. In the letter, they refer to the Kings as Team 5 and the Lakers as Team 6. Here's the letter, quote, Referees A, F, and G were officiating a playoff series between teams 5 and 6 in May of 2002. It was the sixth game of a seven-game series, and a Team 5 victory that night would have ended the series. However, Tim learned from referee A that referees A and F wanted to extend the series to seven games. Tim knew referees A and F to be company men, always acting in the interest of the NBA, and that night, it was the NBA's interest to add another game to the series. Referees A and F heavily favored Team 6. Personal fouls, resulting in obviously injured players, were ignored even when they occurred in full view of the referees. Conversely, the referees called made-up fouls on Team 5 in order to give additional free throw opportunities for Team 6. Their foul calling also led to the ejection of two Team 5 players. The referees' favoring of Team 6 led to that team's victory that night, and Team 6 came back from behind to win that series." End quote. Donahue claimed that two of the referees, in order to benefit the NBA with another game, manipulated the outcome of Game 6 with their officiating in order to send the series to Game 7. Why would you trust the opinion of a corrupt referee about corruption? That makes no sense to me. Best. So we can Shake agree it. that he's a shady referee who's thrown games, correct? I, I don't know if you'll agree with this, but I could also say I don't trust a word he says. What, what's his motivation? Oh, you will see his motivation. Here we go. Donahue also wrote a book published in 2009 titled Personal Foul, a first-person account of the scandal that rocked the NBA. In it, he claims that Game 6 of the 2002 Lakers-Kings playoff was one of the games that showed him just how knowing the officiating team of a particular game could help him easily guess the winner. 
While Game 6 predates his gambling on NBA games, Donahue claims he knew the outcome of Game 6 once the referees of the game were announced, and called it a stunning example of game and series manipulation at its ugliest. In the book, most of the responsibility of Game 6 is placed on referee Dick Bavetta. Donahue claims that referees were informed of missed calls in the interest of the Lakers during a pregame meeting, and that the referees had to figure out what to do with that information. He claims that Bavetta spoke openly after the meeting saying, if we give the benefit of the calls to the team that's down in the series, nobody's going to complain. The series will be even at three apiece, and then the better team can win game seven. Yep, that's one thing I agree with. So you're saying that they got the benefit of the call? No, I was gonna agree with this, the last part, the better team will win in game seven. Donahue claims he also worked other games in which Bavetta manipulated the outcomes. For him to call out Dick Bavetta? Dick Bavetta is a respected man. What does this guy have? He's like, a company man. He's a company man because he's tenured you in the You literally NBA. said- You heard it here first. Anytime anyone works at any place more than 20 years, they're a cheater. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've presented the conspiracy that's obviously fact, I'll throw it back to Ryan. And now, now it's my turn, right? Okay, you turn. you asked me earlier what would be Donahue's motivation for lying. Okay. I'll tell you what it is. Here we go. Although these accusations are severe and troubling, it's worth noting that at the time of writing the accusatory letter, Donahue was awaiting sentencing for felonies involving providing insider information to gamblers and gambling on NBA games himself when the letter was filed. In total, Donahue admitted to betting on 35 NBA games, 16 of which he officiated on, as well as providing insider information on the games for a payout. He pled guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud and conspiracy to transmitting wagering information. While awaiting his sentencing, Donahue produced this letter as a plea to not only try to reduce his sentence, but to also demonstrate his cooperation with the investigation. That's big. He Bet on 35 games and he officiated only 16. That's over half of them he didn't officiate and he believed so much that he was gonna throw his money into there. In the end, Donahue, who could have been sentenced to 33 months in prison per federal guidelines, had his sentence reduced to 15 months instead. He entered prison on September 23rd, 2008. Donahue's allegations were met with many reactions. David Stern, the NBA commissioner at the time, claimed that Donahue's letter was clearly a ploy to lessen his sentence, that the allegations were baseless, and reminded people that Donahue was, quote, an admitted felon, end quote. Okay, I'm glad you're taking Slippery Stern's hey, side. He's right here. Every now and then a blind squirrel finds a nut. Even a blind squirrel could see the series was fixed. I don't think so. A blind squirrel doesn't even watch basketball. Nice. <laughs> he also called out Donahue's treatment of his former co-workers, saying, quote, he turned on basically all of his colleagues in an attempt to demonstrate that he is not the only one who engaged in criminal activity. The U.S. Attorney's Office, the FBI, have fully investigated it, and Mr. Donahue is the only one who is guilty of a crime, and he's going to be sentenced for that crime, regardless of these desperate attempts to implicate as many people as he can, end quote. David Stern is sticking up for his league? No, it's not just Slippery Stern, it's the FBI concluding this. You think the FBI is in the pocket of the big NBA? I don't think so. While most seem to remain suspicious of the officiating, they seem to agree that there wasn't a conspiracy. Bill Jackson, coach of the Los Angeles Lakers at the time, shot back at the allegations, saying, quote, was that after the fifth game, after we had the game stolen away from us after a bad call out of bounds and gave the ball back to Sacramento and they made a three point shot? There's a lot of things going on in these games and they're suspicious, but I don't want to throw it back to there, end quote. Bad calls happen. That's how the game works. Just look at the numbers. You guys set the record. Imagine, just imagine rules are reverse. Imagine, okay, yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. are up. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden the Kings set the record for free throw attempts in a fourth quarter. You don't think something's a little off? I don't think the game's fixed. I think there was bad calls and I go, you know what? We're home for game seven. We're the better team we're gonna win. While the Kings head coach Rick Adelman said, quote, my first thought was, I knew it. I'm not going to say there was a conspiracy. I just think something wasn't right. It was unfair we didn't have a chance to win that game, end quote. King center Scott Pollard was not thrilled by the allegations, commenting, quote, if it was proven that it was, that would hurt. That would hurt the league. It would hurt my feelings. It would, <laughs> sorry, it would hurt my feelings. 
Imagine, dude, if the league came out and said, yeah, yeah, it was fixed. Scott Pollard is an enormous man. Yeah. Just an enormous, <laughs> legit seven footer. He's an enormous an adult saying to cameras, it would hurt my feelings. Uh, to be fair, my feelings have been hurt this entire time. <laughs> it would hurt everybody. That's ugly. I don't want it to be found out that that was true. I would much rather live with human error than human interference. End quote. You know what? All the stuff I said about Scott Pollard, I take it back. This guy knows how to take a loss. Scott Pollard, I apologize. I'm gonna. Michael Wilbon of the Washington Post wrote, quote, three terrific veteran officials called what I still consider the single worst officiated game in the 28 years I've been covering professional basketball. End quote. Say you guys shoot 10 free throws in the fourth quarter, you guys still think you win that game? Yes. I truly believe that. Donahue's claims were investigated by federal prosecutors, as well as an independent investigator hired by the NBA. They found no evidence that the outcome of the games Donahue provided insider information on were influenced or manipulated by Donahue in any way. The independent investigation team also looked into the infamous Game 6. They not only had officiating experts review the game, but they also interviewed NBA employees and the referees who worked the game. The independent investigators state, quote, the game was, in the opinion of the reviewers, poorly officiated, end quote, and found 15 calls that were either erroneous or missed completely. However, the errors were nearly even in terms of who they benefited, with seven for the Kings and eight for the Lakers. Stop it. Th those 15 calls were seven, eight favoring the Lakers, just saying. Okay. There was no evidence found for any of Donahue's other claims in the letter. With the investigators finding no evidence of wrongdoing, there is still no explanation as to why Game 6 was so poorly officiated. With experienced referees, a conference title, and potentially a championship on the line, you would expect the officiating to be flawless in this game. But no amount of game tape will explain this mystery, as Game 6 of the 2002 Lakers-Kings playoff series will remain unsolved. I will say, I look back fondly on the rivalry. Yeah, it was there, a good time. There was a couple series that could have gone either way. For all the viewers who actually sat through that, I apologize profusely. I, I'm ashamed of my behavior, I wasn't myself. We were acting like animals. I was an animal and I'm sorry. It was uncalled for, especially Ryan. Okay, that was a cheap shot. I was having a heartfelt, genuine apology. <laughs> I wouldn't expect nothing less from you. Wait, Put wait. her there. I hate you. I hate you too. But also, the Warriors. Yeah, we can both agree on yeah, that. Yeah, I'll shake to that. I yeah. just cannot stand the Golden State Warriors. 